Arise and shine, arise and shine are words that call for a change. Nothing in the world is going to change if the individual people in the world don't change. And God has changed me so much, but I'll tell you what, I am not satisfied. If you want to know the truth, yes, Christians should be content. But that doesn't mean that we are satisfied to kind of just be okay and maybe mediocre and just kind of, you know, barely enough and long as we're as good as everybody else, that's good enough. I want to keep growing and I want to keep changing and I want to keep helping more people and I want to keep getting closer to God and I want to know him better every single day of my life. It's one thing to be satisfied and content with God. It's another thing to be apathetic and think you don't need to keep pressing on with the Lord. What, what is it that you want me to do? <laughs> well, one thing I don't want you to do is nothing. <laughs> There's a lot of things we can do, but nothing isn't one of them. Nobody can be happy and sit around and do nothing all the time. It's just not possible. In the Amplified Version, Isaiah 60, verse 1 says, Arise from the depression and the prostration in which circumstances have kept you. I like that. Prostration means laying down. And I'm not talking about laying on your couch. I'm talking about laying down on the inside. You see, when I started feeling that weariness, it wasn't in my body. It was in my soul. And I had to get up on the inside. That's where we need to make sure that we stay on fire is on the inside and that every day we're praying for God to use us and to let our light shine. You know what? God has got his people everywhere. There are some of us everywhere in every company, in every school, in every marketplace, in every neighborhood. We are everywhere and God has us strategically placed for such a time as this but what we have to do is turn the lights up. <laughs> you know, if it's dark in my house, I can't just pray the lights on. I, 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 me, I have to go flip the switch. <laughs> and you know what? I hope I provoke a few of you. tonight to flip your switch and get fed up with living in the darkness and having your lights on dim and say, it's time for me to get out in the world and shine brightly and let people know that I am not ashamed that I am a believer in Jesus Christ and I am going to do all I can to make a difference in the world. Now, that doesn't mean that we have to be religiously obnoxious and that we're going to just preach to everybody we see. As a matter of fact, I don't recommend that. What I recommend is instead of telling everybody about Jesus, we get out there and act like him and let our lives be a sermon. I think the worst thing we can do is be hyper-religious and have bumper stickers all over our car and a pound of Christian jewelry hanging around our neck and then get out in the world and act like everybody else out there. We need to let our lives be a sermon. Quit waiting for somebody else to come along and make you happy. Decide you're going to be happy. Quit letting some other sour person steal your joy. 
Make a decision that you're going to have joy no matter what everybody else around you wants to do. We don't have to let everybody else determine what kind of a day we're going to have. We cannot control all of our circumstances, but we can control ourselves. Well, no, Joyce, I can't help it. I just can't help it. I'm going to quickly tell a story that I've told several times, but I can't pass it by. Many, many, many years ago, thank God he's changed me, and I don't do this anymore, but I used to just have temper tantrums. I'd feel sorry for myself. I mean, I wasn't abusive. I didn't hit my kids or anything like that, but I, I yelled a lot. Get your toys out and play. Clean those toys up. Why are you making a mess? Why don't you ever have... Blah, 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 blah. How many of you know when you're unhappy on the inside, you usually take it out on somebody that doesn't have anything to do with it? And then I would feel bad because I acted that way, and then, oh, God, I'm so sorry. I just can't help it. I don't know what's wrong with me. I just lose my temper. Well, you know, one day I was in the middle of one of those temper tantrums and hollering at my kids for something that really wasn't their fault, and the doorbell rang, and I kind of peeked out the window because I really wasn't wanting to see anybody, and lo and behold, it was my pastor. <laughs> you never saw anybody get control over themselves as quick as I got control over myself that day. I mean, I went from screaming at the top of my lungs to opening the door, Pastor, <laughs> praise the Lord. It is so nice of you to stop by. Oh, yeah, the kids are playing in their room. Well, that was probably an outright lie. They were probably in there crying. <laughs> but you know what the lesson was for me? Stop making excuses, Joyce, and saying you can't control yourself. Because you can if there's somebody around that you want to impress. We got a lot more self-control than we think we do. We just don't always want to use it. Amen? We need to get up on the inside. There's a man in John chapter 5, which I'm sure most of you will be thankful. I'm not going to preach on tonight because I've worn this guy out. But he lay by the pool of Bethesda for 38 years waiting for a miracle. 38 years. And the Bible says Jesus, Jesus noticed him lying there in that condition and said to him, how long have you been in this condition? And in the Amplified Bible, it says that, that he did it to shock him into realizing how long he'd been there. And sometimes we need to have a shock. How many days this year have you wasted feeling sorry for yourself maybe? How many days this year have you spent the whole day angry? <laughs> How many days this year have you been full of unforgiveness about something that you should have just let go of alone? How many days have you spent being offended over something minor that you think somebody did to you that they don't even know that they did? <laughs> I'm going to tell you something, and this is the truth. The older you get, the more you realize that you don't have as much time to waste as you did when you were 20. And if nothing else, I would like to provoke you tonight to say, you know what? I'm not going to waste another day of my life being upset over something silly that I can't do anything about. Amen? I'm not going to waste any more of my time being upset because everything didn't go my way. I'm not going to spend my days angry. I'm not going to spend my days mad at somebody who did some little thing to me. I don't have any time to waste. I'm a soldier in the army of God, and I'm going to get out of my house, and if I can't do anything else, I'm at least going to put a smile on my face and let somebody know that Jesus is alive. Amen. He said to him, how long have you been in this condition? The Bible says he had a a deep-seated and a lingering disorder. So that means that he had been really sick 
for a really long time. And I'm sure he was really, really very tired of it. But you know what he was doing? He was laying there waiting for somebody else to come along and solve his problem. And Jesus is the epitome of compassion. Nobody was more compassionate than Jesus is. And he didn't look at that man and say, oh, you poor man, I feel so bad for you. You've laid here 38 years and nobody has come to help you. Jesus looked at him and said, and there is an exclamation mark after this in the Amplified Bible. Jesus looked at him and said, get up, exclamation mark, get up. I love that. 